Welcome to my channel again. In this video, my goal is to compare the accounting cycle for service entities versus the accounting cycle for the merchandise entities. Now, if you want to learn about the step-by-step -step process of the accounting cycle, I've put links on the description below. And also, this is already the episode 6 of my accounting for merchandise entities series. The links of the previous episodes, episodes 1 to 5, are also on the description below. You can check them out first before this video to maximize learning. Now, let's compare the accounting cycle for merchandise entities versus the service entities after this short intro. Now let's start comparing the accounting cycle for merchandise entities versus that of the service entities. So let's have the step 1 and step 2 of the accounting cycle which are the identification of transactions and journalizing of accountable transactions. In merchandising entities, because of its nature of operations, which is the buying and selling of goods, there are these new account titles that will be used related to purchase of goods. We have purchases purchase discounts, purchase returns allowances, and freight in. In sales-related transactions, the new account titles that will be used that are not used by service entities are sales, sales discounts, sales returns and allowances, and the freight out. But if the company is following the perpetual inventory system, you will use two unique account titles. The first one is the cost of sales account and the second account is the merchandise inventory account which actually replaces the purchases, purchase discounts, purchase returns and allowances and freight in. Again, you use these accounts in step 1 and step 2 of the accounting cycle if your company is a merchandising entity. In step 3, which is all about posting the journal entries to the ledger or the T-account, in merchandise entities, you just need to make a T-account or ledger for each of these accounts. And that's it for step 3. And if all has been posted, of course, just get the total of each of these accounts and of course the other accounts also to prepare the unadjusted trial balance which is the step 4 of the accounting cycle. Now let's go to step 5, which is the completion of the worksheet. Again, the first two columns here are for the unadjusted trial balance, which is already done in step 4 of the accounting cycle. The problem now is how to complete these third and fourth columns or the adjustments columns. Now, the adjustments here in the merchandise entities are actually the same with the adjustments that we've talked about in the accounting cycle for service entities. So these columns right here, if you can still remember, are for adjustments on depreciation, doubtful accounts expenses, accrued revenues and accrued expenses, and of course deferred revenues and expenses also. However, in the merchandise entities, Following the periodic inventory system, there is an additional adjusting entry related to the merchandise inventory. But only if the merchandise inventory beginning balance and the ending balances differ. Let us say for example, based on your inventory count last period and your inventory count at the end of this period, you have a merchandise inventory of 15,000 while you have a merchandise inventory ending at the end of the current period of 18,000. So what will be the adjustment? Before we go to that, first let's go on the unadjusted trial balance. If we are talking about merchandise entities, it is expected that you will find the merchandise inventory account right here together with the other assets. However, the balance that will be reflected in here is the beginning balance of 15,000. Now, the problem is, in the adjusted trial balance, the amount that would be reflected in here is not this one, but the current ending balance of the inventories, which is 18,000. So, what do we do in the adjustments? So we need to have a debit here of 3,000 to make this happen. So that's the first adjustment. Actually, 
this merchandise inventory account under the periodic inventory system also appears in the income statement as part of the computation of the cost of sales. Again, this merchandise inventory account appears in the balance sheet just like here and in the income statement. So what do we do next? Well, we just have to put another merchandise inventory accounts here at the bottom where the cost of sale components like purchase, purchase discounts, purchase returns and allowances, and freight in accounts are found. And let's call it merchandise inventory dash income statement beginning and ending. And as to amounts, put the beginning balance in the debit side. So we have here the 15,000 and of course the credit is the ending balance. And as you can see, the adjustments debit postings we have 15 plus 3, it's 18,000, is equivalent with the credit postings. So you don't have to worry. And that's it for the adjustments for merchandise entities. Now, I'll emphasize again that this adjustments is only found on the merchandise entities following the periodic inventory system. If the entity used perpetual inventory system, there will be no need to update the merchandise inventory account. Because again, the account is always updated when there are increases or decreases of inventories. Now let's go to step 6, which is the preparation of the financial statements. The main difference between the service and merchandise entities in terms of financial statements is their difference in their income statements. As I have emphasized in the previous episodes, the income statement of merchandise entities is already composed of two types of expenses. The first is the cost of sales and the second one is the operating expenses. So net sales less cost of sales, we will have the gross profit less the operating expenses equals the net income. This net income will then be used and added in the capital beginning balance together with the investment of the owners less of course the withdrawals and less of net loss to get the capital ending and in the balance sheet specifically in the asset section a merchandise inventory account will be included as part of the current asset section and lastly, as to cash flows, the cash flow statement for merchandise entities follows the same concepts with service entities. So, that's it. On the step 7 to 10 of the accounting cycle, the service and the merchandising entities follow the same concepts. But I will still elaborate on this, especially the closing entries. But first, let's have the step 7, which is the journalizing of the adjustments, which are this, by the way, and of course, plus this if ever we're talking about entities following the periodic inventory system. And after journalizing this, it should be posted in the general ledger or T accounts so that the balances of the ledger will now coincide with the balances here in the adjusted trial balance. Next is the step 8. I hope that you still remembered that this is where the closing entries are journalized and posted. So there are four sets of closing entries, right? The first is the closing of the income statement accounts with debit balances by crediting them and debiting the income summary. In service entities, this is easy. Why? It is because income statement with debit balances only meant expenses, so you will not be confused. In merchandise entities, it's a little bit complicated. Accounts with debit balances here don't necessarily mean expenses. It will be clearer if we have an example. Sample of these accounts with debit balances are the sales discounts and the sales returns and allowances which are not expenses. Another set of accounts are purchases, freight in, merchandise inventory beginning balances, and each of the different operating expenses accounts, which include selling expenses like freight out, commission to agents, and as well as those expenses or accounts related to general and administrative expenses. So, if these accounts are credited, what is the debit counterpart? The debit is the income summary account for a total of this. Now, before we go on, I will tell you something. For you not to be confused about the normal balance of an account in the income statement, you just need to remember this. 
The main account that increases the net profit of the company is sales, and the ones that will decrease the net income are the cost of sales and the operating expenses. Of course, anything that increases the net profit has a normal balance of credit, and anything that decreases it has a normal balance of debit. With that in mind, you can now say that anything that will decrease the sales, like for example the sales returns and allowances and sales discounts, has a normal balance of debit. Because again, the normal balance of sales is credit. Aside from that, we can say that anything that increases the cost of sales, like for example, the purchases, the merchandise inventory beginning, and the freight in, has a normal balance of debit because cost of sales and operating expenses have a debit normal balance. So, purchase discounts, purchase returns and allowances, and merchandise inventory end has a normal balance of credit because this accounts decreases the cost of sales. And that's how you familiarize the normal balances of the income statement accounts. So let's continue. If the accounts with debit balances are credited right here, then these accounts will be reduced to zero if these credits are posted to the ledger. But before that, we have the second closing entry, which is the opposite of this one, which is an entry to close the income statement accounts with credit balances by debiting them. So these accounts with credit balances that should be debited here are the purchase returns and allowances, purchase discounts, merchandise inventory ending balance, and the sales, and other income and other gains. After debiting them, you have to credit the income summary account for a total of this also. Now, before we go to the closing entry number 3, you can total the income summary postings right here and right here to know the net income of your company. So if the credits are greater, that means the company enjoyed a net income, but if the opposite happened, then the difference of these postings is the net loss. Aside from that, if you noticed, we have account titles here with red colored fonts. I would like to remind you again that these accounts are not used by entities using the perpetual inventory system. So, what will be included in here? If we talk about perpetual inventory system, it's the account cost of sales. Actually, these red colored fonts are the components of the cost of sales. Remember? Beginning inventory plus net purchases, which is the net purchases is again purchases plus freight in minus purchase returns and allowances minus purchase discounts equals total goods available for sale minus the merchandise inventory ending balance equals the cost of sales. Let's go now to the third closing entry, which is to close the income summary account. How to do that? Let's say for example, the income summary credit postings here is greater than the debit postings right here. So if that's the case, we close the income summary account by debiting it. Because if the credit posting here is greater, then that means the income summary account has a credit balance. And to close it, we need to debit the account with a corresponding credit to the capital account of course. Of course, if this debit posting is greater than this credit posting, then this entry will be reversed. So that's it for the third closing entry. Lastly, we have the fourth closing entry which aims to close the withdrawal account by crediting it and by debiting the GLETS capital account. So after these entries, the next step is to post these closing entries to the ledger. After doing that, you can expect that the income statement and withdrawal accounts will already be reduced to zero because that is really the purpose of the step 8 of the accounting cycle which is again to close the income statement or temporary accounts as well as the withdrawal account. And you can also expect that the capital account balance after posting this will now be the same with the capital ending balance found in the statement of changes in equity. So that's it for step 8. Step 9 is just the preparation of the post-closing trial balance, which is just the listing of the balances of the ledger accounts after the adjustments and closing entries are posted. And the last step of the accounting cycle 
is the reversing entries which is identical with the reversing entries concept that I've taught you in the episode 8 of the accounting cycle. The link is on the description below. But I will still talk about it a little bit. Again, the entries that should be reversed are these adjusting entries but not all of them. Only the adjusting entries for the accrued revenues accrued expenses, deferred expenses, and deferred revenues, but only if they are accounted for using the expense method and the revenue method. Adjustments for deferrals, which are accounted for using the asset and liability methods, as well as the adjustments for the doubtful accounts expense and the depreciation expense are not reversed anymore. So that's it for this particular video. If this helped, please click like, subscribe, and share, and hit the notification bell to be updated on my next videos. You can also give your suggestions in the comment section below. The next videos will be related to inventory estimation. Thank you for always watching.